Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We've got Ideas by Elliot. Hey, folks, you're listening to Ideas by Elliot. And we're here with Ideas by Elliot. Podcast, podcast, <laughs> podcast. This is the Ideas by Elliot podcast, sponsored by Camera Corner Studios, Yikes Salon, Trisha Nell Law, and Release Wire, with your host, technology and online marketing and entrepreneurship expert, Elliot Christensen. This is his chance to take a break and talk in depth with the most interesting people we know. There are no rules, there is no censor, there are no do-overs. It's raw, unscripted, and nev- n- never edited except for today. You'll hear. Listen. Uh, this is episode 21 with entrepreneur and 2016 Brown County Board of Supervisors candidate Alex Galt. Alex will talk about Kavarna, reveal why he's running for office, and talk about the ups and downs of owning a business. He helped us with the music today, so enjoy that and head on over to iTunes and Stitcher and leave some ratings and reviews. Mr. Keaton off a bicycle, like the apple on Newton's head. Let's all fall in love again. Like the eensy weensy spider wash down the spout. Like Cinderella on laundry day. Let's all just wash the past away. So I'm here with Alex, Alex Galt, and uh, Alex, uh, tell the listeners about that song a little bit. Oh, um, <clears throat> you brought it. Sure. No, I I brought that today. Um, you asked, so uh, I did ask. <laughs> you didn't you didn't force it on us. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Um, back in college, my friend Kevin Seal and I we wrote a couple songs together, and we just had this um, fragment of a line that was like Buster Keaton off a bicycle. Uh, and so several years ago when many of our friends were gathered together for my friend Felix's wedding um, we just finished writing the song and recorded it over the course of an evening nice yeah it was fun so you would say that you took the lead in that musical endeavor right um, my, my friend Kevin Seal who's the voice you hear in that um, yeah like like it was Probably mostly us. I think we had most of the melody and the um, the words sketched out before the other people arrived. But nice. Um, so um, I know you. Obviously, I think everybody in the world knows you and your wife Linda run Kavarna. Kavarna Coffee House. Talk yeah. a little bit about that, and then I want to talk about you know some music and things that go on there. Oh well, um, I you know it's, it's kind of the story of our marriage in some respects. I, you know, um, my, my wife Linda, um, she's the one who opened it back in 1999, and uh, that, that was before we really even knew each other very well. I'd, I'd met her a few times, but um, when she opened Kavarna, I, I was living out of town. I was living in New York City, but uh, I, I would come back for the holidays to visit my folks, and when she did that, that really caught my attention. I thought, you know, who is this person? You know, and I, I, and I was thinking... It's really easy to you know, move to New York City and build a life there or move to Chicago or whatever and, and just be kind of surrounded by um, lots of wonderful things. But, it, you know, it's, it's a different story to um, stay where you're from and create things where you, where you, where you live and, and maybe add to the, you know, sort of the diversity and the culture of, of that area, you know. You know, you know and and um, so I, I thought that was pretty cool that she'd done that. Um, and... Uh, so I remember um, when, when I was living in New York, I, I, um, I eventually I, I thought I'd move back to the Midwest. And, yeah. and part of my thinking was that um, I might possibly meet someone like Linda. Yeah. You know, because um, to me, she was almost kind of like this like heroic archetype. Um, and um, it just kind of worked out that I, I ran into her. And even stranger was that um, – she actually was the person I kind of imagined that she was, and we just really hit it off from, you know, really the first date. Wow, I um, yeah, I yeah. see. I I guess I I kind of inferred some of that stuff. But, yeah, I uh, didn't know that. So but you're from Green Bay. I am from Green Bay, and yeah. so uh, you sound like a world traveler. So you uh, you lived in New York for a while. 
how that, uh, how that all go about? Well, um, a- after I graduated from college, um, I-, I sort of moved east, and I lived in Baltimore for a while, and then um, Boston, Massachusetts, and then I lived in Brooklyn for a few years, and then back to Chicago, and then I moved up to Green Bay, um, you know, because of that, you know, because I had been dating Linda for a while, and it just made a lot more sense for me to be here than for her to come down to Chicago. Oh, so you were still actually in Chicago. Yeah. um, Wow. The first... See, I didn't even realize that. The first year or so of our um, relationship was long distance, you know. Wow. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, so we can look back to some of that stuff. Mm. The, the reason that I was sort of pushing you to come here, and I know you're a little under the weather, so I really appreciate that, um, was because you announced something about you're running for some office or something, right? Yeah, that, that, that's right. I'm running for um, Brown County Supervisor um, in District 15, which comprises um, portions of Northern Alloway in Bellevue. So, um, like, what are the... What are the boundaries? Of that? <clears throat> um, okay, so on, on, on the northern end, it's it's um, uh, the northern bo- um, edge of Alloway, south to um, about Mission Road, and then it gets a little screwy um, just west of Webster. But you know, it's essentially, you, you know, I like you can safely say that Alloway Avenue is kind of like the southern boundary with some extra little bits of Alloway. Okay, um, and then. It's um, that same portion of Bellevue, um, okay. You know, from north to south. So it's, that's a pretty. Is that a pretty big district? It's pretty b- big. Um, the Bellevue portion of it isn't all that um, dense. Oh. So okay. Um, I, I think most of the districts are roughly the same population. Uh, well, I think that's the idea. They're yeah. supposed to be right. Um, I, that probably changes over time and redistricting all that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You're the politician. You're supposed to know that. <laughs> Like I told Gina before, uh, I'm like, I just have to ask the questions. I don't have to know the answers you do. <laughs> <laughs> so I was also um, kind of wondering, um, like, why why do this? Like, aren't, aren't you busy enough? You have a business. You have two daughters. Correct. I have yeah. that right? Okay. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, guess, I guess there are a bunch of reasons. Um, I think probably the biggest one for me personally is that it's always been a little bit hard for me to sit on the sidelines. Um, and um, I, I found that I was getting increasingly exasperated by national politics and um, that I really just wanted to set all of that aside and get very local in my thinking. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, I think that's great because um, I've already found over the past couple of years that um, working and thinking in a nonpartisan local Mindset is just a lot. It's a lot more fruitful. It's a lot more constructive, and it ultimately, it's just better for your soul. You know, I mean that that. See, maybe you would be a good politician. Um, so when I was first, um, you know, when I first uh, was uh, on the board at on Broadway and was president, I got a I got a, a call from someone in the media, and uh, you know, off the record, he said, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> <laughs> it turns out I was. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, but I know what I, I, I think I know what drives me, but like what, what, like what drives you to do that? You know, it's, I mean, it's yeah. easy, it's easy to say these things, these platitudes, right? Like, uh, you know, the most important stuff is local, but I mean, most people don't. Most people don't. I, I you know, I, I can't really respond to that. It's, it's, um, like I, I can respond to. It, I just can't really explain it very well. It, um, what it comes down to is, um, if, if, if I don't see the thing happening in the world that I want to happen, then I, you know, then I start thinking about doing that thing. Right. And, um, you know, oh, th- thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's uh, <laughs> you know it, it, it's hard for me not to think in terms of doing. You know, and and if I can't, like in, in the case okay. of national politics, yeah. then I, I get I get really frustrated. Oh, and, I think we all do. Yeah, filled with dread and right. just. Um, it's so, helpful. what kind of things do you want to do? Well, um, I, I think, um, and, and this is the other reason that I, I'd like to run. I, I think. 
I'm from the Green Bay area. Mm-hmm. Um, I was born in Green Bay. Then re- yeah. later on, we moved to Alloway. Uh, but I, you know, I, I can remember when this community had state of the art everything. You know, in in the late '80s and early '90s, our library system was considered the best in the state. In 1994, it won the um, National Library of the of the Year. Okay. You know, at, at that time, it was you know topping his class, and um, we, we've gone from um, being a community that supports that kind of thing and that kind of thinking to a community that um, you know is 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 telling you know the, the hardworking people who run the library that. Um, that they can, you know, that they should do the best with what they have, and um, you know that, that that's kind of that's kind of the limit. I, I would like to see that, and I'm 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 choosing the library as an easy example, but okay. I, I would like I would like to see that as um, I would like to see that become a state of the art facility again. And, and well, I, it's I think so oh, okay. So I mean, I guess uh, maybe we could take a step back from that. What sort of things are under the purview of the of, of the county board? Yeah. Um, the county board it, it, it's not it's not um, a legislative body to the same degree the city council is or the state yeah. legislature or something like that it's much more it's more of a fiscal body um, so it is making decisions about how to um, allocate funding and the, the, the tax money that's collected and um, you know where to put those priorities and what to do about them um, so I mean, to go back to the library is an easy example. I mean, we're looking at millions of dollars in deferred maintenance, um, which, it, you know, it, it, as a business owner, it's something that just kind of offends me. I mean, it doesn't make sense to not spend $10 to fix something if it's going to cost you $100 to replace that thing right. five years later. So is that ha- occurring now, or are you saying this? these were, like, past since? No, that, well, right that, that is occurring now. Okay. Um, the, uh, you know, the the library and a lot of other our other county infrastructure is is you're really kind of beginning to erode and crumble. Um, some of it needs to be replaced. So I actually love the library, but I'll I'll be devil's advocate a little bit on that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think some would say that the what's the point of a library now? We have we have the Google. Mm-hmm. So what? Why do people need libraries? Well, I, I think that you need to step back, and I mean not you in particular, but I I, th- I think. I'm, physically, I'm stepping back right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, what is a library? I mean, in, in the, in the, for the past 2,000 years, it's been a place to access printed material. Um, what, so what's a library today when, you know, um, they're, they're, you know, printed material is still very important, but it's only um, one aspect of the total information mm-hmm. that, that we now have and generate. Um, I mean, what it really is is a place to interface with the world of information. And um, wh- where I would love to see the library go, and I know it's already headed in this direction. I think it's under it's under good leadership right now. Um, but where I would like to see it go is is a place that has um, more of a continuing mission to help people access that information. You know, and, and I think that's very important because and I was I was thinking about this a little bit this morning. Um, y- you know, why why is Milwaukee the size it is, and why is Chicago the size it is, and it has a lot to do with geography. Yeah. Um, you know, initially th- these are places that were important because of their um, access to Lake Michigan. Mm-hmm. Chicago became more important because of its um, importance as a railroad hub, and um, things like you know ships on the lake or. Um, you know, these transportation networks, I mean, those also carried information with them, you know, and um, in a very real sense, um, you know, like the geography of these places was dictated by their importance in terms of the information flow of the country, you know, as represented by, you know, physical things, but also later on telegraphs and um, things of that nature, you know, Um, and you know, I think in the future, um, the places that are going to be very important are the ones that, uh, where there's a meaningful connection between the population mm-hmm. and the internet. And um, I, I think uh, you know, the, the libraries that exists right now, like one, one of the reasons why I think it's really important is because, it, it, you know, aside from the schools, it's really the only institution we have as a community that's sort of dedicated to the continuing education of all the people who live here. 
You know? So uh, I know there's been uh, there've been some proposals in the past to um, at least, I mean, maybe not organizationally, but physically, like move the library in with the museum and that kind of stuff to free up some of the real estate to sell it off or lease it off. You know anything about that? I don't know how you feel about that. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. Well, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> well, you are. We've established that. You know, um, I remember there was a proposal a couple of years ago to, um, you know, r- you know, physically build a new library on top of the museum. Something. Yeah, I've yeah. heard. I've heard all sorts of things, uh, different I, ideas and theories. Yeah, yeah. I, I just. I don't, I'm not sure how realistic that is. I mean, I, I can see the sense behind it, and um, I think we're all in favor of, you know, saving money and being efficient and so forth, and that's that's important too. But I, I think we actually do have a really great facility with the existing library um and you know i I think we i think it probably makes more sense to improve what we have rather than build something brand new so i and i i I talked uh briefly uh at an event with the executive director at at the library and uh he is very interested in uh having classes and you know things to attract more young people Mm -hmm. um so i mean i I do think that there's some good energy and enthusiasm there so uh, um on the surface though i think most people their knee-jerk reaction uh would be that yeah what the heck are we spending money on a library for so i mean uh you know if there if there's an actual need and it's actually being serviced well i think that most people would be in favor of that right well i i think it's a place where we can i mean to back up a little bit i mean i think we've done a really good job of in this community. well, I mean, I, 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 there, there are lots of places like Green Bay, Wisconsin, yeah. where the conversation is, um, can we keep our street lights on? You know, uh, I'm, and I'm thinking a lot of like, mid-sized cities in places like sure. Michigan and, sure. and and so forth. You know, and that, that's the conversation they're having. You mm-hmm. know, and I think we're very fortunate um, that we're not in that position. I mean, like our manufacturing economy has really. I mean, at this point, it's one of the strongest in the country on, yeah. on like a proportional basis. I mean, you know, the fact that we still have something like 30% manufacturing in this community is extraordinary. And it speaks to yeah. the uniqueness of like our, our, our workforce and, and the types of things that we've manufactured. You know, um, there just aren't too many communities that make the kind of things that we do. And that's why we've been able to survive um, like that. But, um, but I think that going forward, I mean, we, we definitely we want to maintain that. Um, but we also need to make sure that um, you know we're doing everything we can to make this community um, as strong as it can be um, moving forward into a new economy. And um, I think that's probably going to involve you know teaching people new things. You know, I think there's one of the big unspoken problems. I mean, people don't really talk about this as much as they should, but um, you know. They're, they're in, in a lot of ways, um, our economy is leaving people behind. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we, our, our companies are more productive than they used to be. So what do you think our, our being, county can do about that, though? Well, Anything? I, I, I think that um, we, we need to both build skills, um, make sure people are prepared to be working um, more digitally, um, that make, make sure people are more comfortable with the internet. I'd love to see classes at the, uh, uh, the at the uh, library that teach adults how to code. You know, I, I think that would be great. Um, you know, I, I think there. Are, you know, I want to make sure that we're seizing those kinds of opportunities. You know, um, I've um, met. You know, it's it's funny if you have to gather all these signatures to to run, and um, so over the course of the last two weeks, I've I've just been knocking on random doors and Good. meeting people that I otherwise wouldn't. Well, that's meet. what it's all about. No, yeah, it's, it's great. You know, it's it's yeah. cool. I, I I like that you have to ask people's permission to run. You mm-hmm. know, um, and I, I've I've met a few people who are out of work and who are in their you know late forties, early fifties, and there's just you know it's like they've. You know they've been laid off for whatever reason, and there's no real place for them to go. You know their 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 skill set isn't doesn't really match what people need, and mm-hmm. and, and you know like I was saying earlier, that there's in a very real sense, we just don't have as many jobs for people as we used to because we're we're, we're getting more efficient in how we do things. I mean there used to be. Uh, you know, many more sort of mid-level managers. There used to be many more administrative people. Um, like all of those things have been 
kind of cannibalized by technology in some respect or other, you know? I, w- I would say enhanced, personally. Well, it, 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 well that's the thing. I mean, um, I, I would it, say that we're able to do more. But well, we do do more. We, we, we do, that's what I'm saying. We, we do do more. Um, but that, that, that's, and that's great for some people. But no, it, I know. It's, right. it's not so great if, if you're the person who is doing the doing yeah. and you're not yet prepared to do something else. No, I get it. Yeah. So yeah. We, we need to, you know, in order to feed an economy like that, you really have to have a culture that's creating more companies and creating sure. more, you know, volumes of business, you know? Right. Right. Um, so how many signatures do you have to gather? That was one thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, it, it's it's well for uh, it depends on the office, but for um, well, Brown, for your for Brown County supervisor, yeah. it was a hundred. Okay. Um, and then typically you you get some more just in case you get you, extras you, in case somebody makes a mistake. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're all done with that. Yeah, I, I turned those okay. in yesterday. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. you're a, you're an actual candidate. Or well, probably um, the, <clears> but I, I haven't received the official validation of the of yeah. the signature, so they're you know okay. And uh, when is there a primary for this? Um, well, the, the, the primary, which would be February sixteenth, yeah. that, that's if there are more than two candidates in a okay. race. So, um, so far, there are just the two of us. Okay, um, that could have changed today. I haven't had a chance. And to get who's your to opponent? Check. Um, his name is Tom Caters. Okay, um, by all accounts, is is a perfectly nice person. And um, is he? He's an incumbent. He is the incumbent. Okay, so I mean. Uh, Incumbents tend to have a little bit of a leg up because they have name recognition. I'm, I'm, but you know, not in your case. I you, actually you don't know, think that's true. It, it, it's actually kind of funny. I, uh, not one person that I spoke to had ever heard of him. Interesting. You know, and so knowing that, um, you would like your constituents to know who you are, right? So, like, what kinds of things are you doing to to make sure that they that they know you and they know how to reach you? Well. Um, Say podcast. Oh, <laughs> well, self plug. Anytime you, you want to set on politics, the first thing you do is you you line up a podcast to, to go on into, you know. And I've seen your Facebook efforts. Yeah, yeah no, some, I'm <laughs> some things out there. No, I I, I I I set up the the you know obligatory Facebook page for it. Um, uh, it's pretty much digitally speaking. That's all I've done so far. I'll, I'll probably throw up some kind of brochure where kind of website at some point. Just um to have like a more and not everybody's on facebook you know yes um, they are they actually are linda's not like literally everyone Everybody. every single person ha. so <laughs> <laughs> so uh by the way uh mm-hmm. i i am pleased to announce that you have my endorsement and and max's endorsement i believe also oh that's important. even though we're, we're not in your district so it doesn't yeah. matter that's like that's really, you're in you're in you're in Kaizima's district uh yeah 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 okay uh yeah yeah Okay. <laughs> so, uh, any you have anything else to say about that, or we can uh, kind of go to this? Oh, okay. Is that cool? I should take one of those so I know what I'm saying. Okay. Oh, the sponsor plug. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just sit back. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, you could refill your water, go get some mm-hmm. uh, bourbon or whatever you know, whatever yeah. whatever it is people do when we're doing our. I don't know. <laughs> I just kind of zone out and go into two seven two zero one four eight land. Yeah. Yeah, so you have a fancy printed brochure. So I do. We have these now. Um, and I, I should have these on Facebook very soon. Oh, okay. I'm okay. just waiting on the final approval because okay. I'm not sure if this is 100%. But I know the pricing on here is accurate. You know, uh, we're at Camera Corner Studios. We do podcasts like this one. Uh, we do videos. We do all kinds of things. Live broadcast, as we saw with your political episode. Right. Uh, just contact us if you're interested in doing anything ranging from, you know, podcasting to video. We have a package for it. We do have packages. That's what the new flyer announces. So like, um, you know, do it yourself package starts at 65 bucks an hour. Uh, the podcasting is like 150. Uh, we can go up and do the high end talk show like you did. That's about a thousand bucks. So, uh, this, this flyer kind of gives you a good overall, but, uh, you know, we can build anything that you need. You know, these, these packages are built off of our a la carte pricing. So, uh, maybe you don't need a three cameras and two TVs. Well, it's not going to cost you a thousand bucks then. So, uh, just the best way to find out how to use us is to give us a call at nine two zero two seven two zero one four eight. Awesome. Was that quick enough? Uh, you know, you know, that's a philosophical question because I, I really don't know how long ad read should be. Uh, but uh, Well, the industry tells us 30 seconds. Yeah, well. Or 215s in you, one program. You mean the dying media industry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. I wasn't so. timing myself. So. No, that's no, that was that was fantastic. So, uh, so back to Alex, uh, if that's okay. Sure. Should we move on to somebody else? Uh, I can read more ads if you want. I mean. <laughs> well, we we, uh, we do have to we do have some other sponsors spots, so uh, so we don't we don't have to talk too much about stuff. Uh, tell me about uh, your family. Oh, um, all right. We we have. Um, I mean, I want your kids to listen to this and be excited about it. Okay, so, so. There's, there's Frida, age seven, uh, and Johanna, age nine. Uh, I think uh, allegedly they're at home practicing. Um, their musical instruments right now. Um, Frida picked up the cello and Johanna picked up the violin. Um, they're, they're both at school um, over at Leonardo da Vinci. Nice. Yeah, there, it's been a good fit so far. Um, so uh, how involved are they in the business? So, I mean, I've been there a few times and they're super industrious and cleaning stuff up. And I was kind of blown away. Just the, the couple times that I oh. that I noticed that happening. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't know when that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so that that's no, a, I'm, I'm kidding. I know you are. Yeah. I know you are. Um, uh, that's the thing about about kids. So like uh, when they when other people are around, they're always uh, you know they they yeah. step it up a notch, which is good. That's usually the case. Yeah, I, well, yeah, it's not always yeah. the case. Uh, guess, yeah. Perhaps, but. Um, yeah, they they, they, they they like having you know little jobs assigned to them and so forth. I mean, right now they're they're not too involved at Kabar sure. because there's not yeah that much they can do. Right. You know, um, I remember when we were running Liberty Cafe um, that they used to come by after school to help close every now and then, um, and and that was a little bit easier for them because it involved a lot of you know wiping tables and sweeping and stuff right. like that. You know. Yeah. So. So uh, do you think that? So, uh, so I know a lot of like family businesses, right? And uh, I think that that's something that um, it crosses your mind. Like, do you think that do you want them to be involved? Do you think they're going to want to be involved? I, I I hope they'll want to be involved, but yeah. I, I don't have some expectation that they'll take over the family business at some point or okay. something like that. Um, I don't think we're really thinking that long term, you okay. know. But you know, certainly um, I, I enjoy when they're involved. Um, and I, I think they get a lot from it, you know. I think, um, I mean, honestly, when, when we um, when, when we first um, when, when Linda first when we first discovered that Linda was pregnant, I mean, I think that um, you know at, at that point we we were working on selling Kavarna, you know, um, and this would have been about ten years ago. And uh, <laughs> I think when, when she when we discovered that she was pregnant. Um, it almost reversed our thinking because we started thinking about the kids we knew who had grown up in businesses and around businesses, and mm -hmm. and we liked those kids a lot because they, they just um, interesting. They, they just seemed to, I don't know have like a better sense of how the world worked, and I felt like they had more agency, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, having kids was part of the reason why we decided to stay in business. Wow. Yeah. I guess I I didn't I, I maybe I kind of knew that, but I. I See, that's hey, sort of news to me. It, it wasn't really something we were talking right. about or broadcasting at that point. I wasn't that involved at Gavarna at that point. Um, yeah. I, I didn't really get involved with it in a, in a full-time sense until um, Johanna was born. And that was the beta version of Gavarna. Yeah, the, the, the ten-year-long beta version of Gavarna. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know what you. I don't know if you have code words for this stuff, but like, I, I think what you have now is amazing. Yeah, I'm, like I'm, every time I walk in there, and you've been in the the, the new Kavarna for how long now? Uh, about five and a half years. See, it yeah. just feels new. Wow. Still yeah, it. it still feels new to me. So yeah. I, you know, I walk in there and I'm just, I'm still blown away every time because yeah. I, I just think about it being your old place, which was great, and um, this is like, you know, the all of the the typical things people say. It's like Kavarna on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I love it. Uh, I love the multi layers. I love that it's a great venue for music. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I love that you expanded the menu a little bit and you you know you played with some of that stuff. Sure. Uh, I think all that stuff is great. Um, so on music, uh, I I was kind of wondering maybe maybe you don't like picking favorites. So I'll, I'll you know if you if you feel uncomfortable with that, I'll sort of let you off the hook. But I was wondering if you had any favorites. You know, favorite artists that have performed at Kavarna. Sure, yeah, no, I, I love talking about the people yeah. who have performed at Kavarna. Um, we have a, a couple of people who, you know, at this point, we're just kind of on their annual tour cycle. 
you know. Yeah. Um, um, folks like um, Lil Rev, um, who's played at Kavarna many times. Sure. He's out of Milwaukee. He's probably, I don't know, one of the greatest ukulele players in the country. Um, we're just really fortunate. You're pretty like, good yourself. Just, like, <laughs> like, 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 not, I think we're, we're before the, before the podcast we're talking about the difference between a hack and a professional. Oh, right, right, and, right, right. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> Lil Rev is a pro. Man. Okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's got it down. You know, you know, he, he can. So you know yeah. enough to recognize greatness, though. In ukulele playing, it's, it's not always evident. In other things. Ev- evidently, I I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell the difference. <laughs> yeah. Um. But you know, it's it's fun. We we've had a lot of performers over the years, and um, it, it, it's a very small part of our business. Sure. Um, yeah. Sadly, I've never been able to build it into anything that made any kind of business sense. So I mean, I, I kind of regard it as a hobby in some respects. Well, I know. I mean, I know yeah. you don't do it as a. I know it's not a huge yeah. profit center. I. I no. but, but that's yeah. that's why I would like to you know give you some props for that because that uh, I, I know it's extra work. I know mm-hmm. it's. Uh, I don't know. You might even lose money on those days. I really don't know. But well, I, I'm not allowed to lose money on music anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you have a smart business partner. I, I, I acknowledge. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I think I just think it's great. I think it's great when we have, um, you know, we have bars mm. where there's music, right? Sure. And well, this I, is a place that's not a bar and is not a religious yeah, place. And, and, and there's and, music. And, 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 that. and that's important to me. Really important. I, I yeah. love. I mean, one of the things that um, you can find in the city, but you, you can't necessarily find in Green Bay, um, is just the opportunity to accidentally bump into culture of different kinds. Right. And so that's something I'm really, really excited about being able to provide to some degree. Yeah. You know, I, I love when we have something like a like a string quartet or something playing. And you know, I mean, you, you could have, you, you know anybody could wander in, and it's possible they've never seen a string quartet play right. before. You know, um, so and we've had some very unusual things over the years. I mean, everything from Eastern European brass bands to um, you know gypsy jazz ensembles to um, we, we, you know, you, you you name it. I mean, uh, we've had very avant-garde classical music. Um, so you think, you, I, and I, I know you know that this matters, but uh, and this is just a little bit anecdotal. Um, and it wasn't in Kavarna; it was actually in Austin. Uh, mm-hmm. I was there for a conference, and uh, in the off times of the conference, you know, I went exploring a little bit, and I went into this little coffee shop. Um, the people had relocated from, I think, from Philadelphia, and uh, opened a coffee shop down there. And this uh, this band was playing, and it was like crazy music that I would normally not be into. Like there yeah. was an accordion player and like a you know giant like I don't know what it was bass cello something, and it was mm-hmm. phenomenal. And uh, turned out these guys were from Hawaii. They were from Honolulu, and they're playing in Austin. And I was just talking to them. I got excited. I bought a T-shirt and I bought a CD from them and. Uh, you know, sign up for their stuff, follow them all over their, you know, they go all over the place now. Um, and this is the craziest thing. And maybe I told you this before, but I, 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 I don't, I, I don't tell everybody, I guess I'm, I'm wearing their t-shirt. I'm in Austin, Texas, the city of music, right? I'm in Austin, Texas. I'm walking across the bridge and this guy on a bike, this, you know, bearded hipster looking dude comes up to me and he's like, do you know those guys? And keep in mind, they're not from there. Yeah. I'm not from there. And the guy who stopped me wasn't from Austin either. He was from Chicago and went to college with one of the guys in the band from Honolulu who were in Austin. Blew my mind. So, like, that sort of serendipity made me feel like, yeah. well, it made me feel like I was the king of music in Music City, USA. So that was pretty cool for 30 seconds, right? Um, but, uh, like, it matters. I'm st- like, that... Like that just reinforced everything I feel about all of that. Yeah. The that I'm sure they didn't make any the the coffee place that I was at. Like, I probably bought one extra cup of coffee. You know, like I don't know what else I could really do sure. to support their yeah. business. But um, you know, I tried to support the band and I tried to support them, and uh, it was uh, it was phenomenal. It was super great, and so don't stop doing that. 
No, I, I, I won't. I mean, I, my, my, I'm not going to pay for it, but <coughs> please don't stop. <laughs> my, 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 my enthusiasm for it, it you know, it, it, it ebbs, it's it, tough. It, it ebbs and flows, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes it just catches, and you have just an amazing night that's just transformative. And other times, you know, three people show up, and you know, you sort of right. kind of kind of smile awkwardly at every moment. And I don't know if you keep it up to date, but you have like you have a like Kavarna playlist, I think, somewhere right? yeah. on Spotify or something. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess I, I I guess I canceled my Spotify subscription. So, so I, I did too. I went I to Apple Music, so I don't <laughs> yeah. have it anymore. So maybe no, I should talk about it. Yeah, uh, no, I. I um, I eventually migrated over to. Um, I, I loved having that though, and uh, yeah, that's great. Like yeah, that's a I, that's a fantastic way to promote those artists. So, like I mean, maybe you didn't even know anybody's looking at it, but I certainly did. Um, and I like I didn't like wasn't you know studying it, but yeah. you know it, it exposed me to like local music. Like, sure, but I, I never you know, heard like, of like every now and then, <clears throat> like like I'll you know look at different like you know record pressing plants and prices and just kind of like you know think like wouldn't it be awesome to have like sort of like a, like a Kavarna LP with like you know tracks from different people who played there over the yeah. years and stuff like that but I, there's just it's such a big fiscal risk you know it's it's not cheap to uh, well well some, right and I think that that was uh, we talked to the green blah guys that were doing the documentary yeah, yeah. on punk rock and uh, like they're doing the, 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 the video documentary but um, I I actually think that they should be able to make some kind of money putting the music together and putting an album out. Like I think that that has probably a little more staying power. I don't. I don't maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Music is weird now. <laughs> I'm not sure. That would have been an awesome like, Kickstarter like prize, right. right? Yeah. So I mean, they did that for the for the movie for the yeah. documentary, but uh, I think they could do it in. I don't know. And they, you know, they talked about that too. The whole Kickstarter thing. Like mm-hmm. people get all excited about it, but you know, you're in business. Like even if you like a big success story on Kickstarter is like. You know, somebody gets fifty thousand dollars, and like th- that's a lot of money. But like yeah. in the t- in terms of a business and employees, like you can you can blow fifty thousand dollars in an afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very true. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, so I mean, and, and so they they were saying that uh, when it's all said and done, um, they're certainly not going to make any money on it. So like I don't know, like I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> well, I, I think that's a new paradigm and right in business is just you know you know i mean and i, I feel like most businesses I, I see being started aren't ones that people are necessarily doing for the money i mean they're, 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 you know i think you know that it's it's sort of it's more dictated by a quality of life i mean certainly yeah. um for, for me and linda doing what we do um i mean I, I used to make more money doing what i did prior you know than we do collectively with kavarna right um but you, you just can't really trade the the kind of lifestyle that we're, we're able to have. I mean, it's a double-edged sword, as you know. I mean, yeah. you know, th- there, there are times when you're very stressed out and you have no control over your life. But then, you know, when, when things are working well, which, you know, fortunately for us, and like knock, knock on laminate, you know, um, it, it has been, you know. Should have swapped the table. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, then it would have been plastic, so. <laughs> you know, maybe 80% of the time or whatever has worked pretty well, you know. And, right. Um, you know, it's it's wonderful to have that degree of control over your life. So I kind of feel like I don't know. I mean, I I, I think we uh, we have like uh, distorted views of history, but I feel like that's what we had, you know, in our country to start with. A bunch of I, I have the, this vision of all these artisans and uh, people that do things. You know, they have you know they have family farms and things too. Sure, but like mm-hmm. anybody who's doing anything else, they're doing it because they love it. I, I would think, and maybe they can make a little money, but you know they're not, uh, they're not whatever Microsoft or Apple, right? Um, mm-hmm. And in a way, we're sort of getting back to that. I mean, yeah, there's it, only it's so much definitely, room for that. you know, a twenty first century cottage economy. You know, yeah, yeah. And so I wonder, like you, you know, you mentioned the manufacturing sector. Like we're we're sort of blessed that we have some of that anyway. But um, you know, the whole economy is moving sort of away from. A lot of that, in in a lot of ways, and maybe it's some of that'll come back or whatever. I I I don't know much about the future, but um, I don't what like. What do you tell your kids about how to prepare for you know when they're forty? You know, <laughs> well, it's difficult. I mean, I I think 
you know, we're 40 somethings ish. Yeah. And that, I round down. I, I usually go for the 30, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, the world of today isn't the world we necessarily prepared for when we were kids, you know, true. And, I mean, I remember, you know, I, I, I left my last job job in 1999 and at that time, it, it was kind of, you had this sort of, on one hand, you can have security, you know. On the other hand, you can have, like, freedom or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that, that trade-off felt pretty real in 1999. Yeah. Uh, but today, it's, it's, it's kind of like you can, you can be insecure and free. Right. Or you can be insecure and work for other people, you know. Right. And, and that, that's fine. I mean, um, you know, there's certain things you can only do if you work for other people. Like, you can't really be a professor on your own or something like that. True. But, True. Um, so, so I'm, I, you know, I'm, you know it's, it really comes down to what you want to be doing. Um, but I, I think at the end of the day, I think um, we need to teach our kids to be, to be confident and then to be fully literate in whatever the information technology is you know i mean like i i hope that my kids learned how to code you know i, I hope that they're fully able to engage with the way things work you know I, I want them to have a lot of media literacy i want them to be able to you know see behind the headline and understand you know why it's being written who's writing it and what it means so i do know how to code and I actually think there's going to be less coding in yeah. 30 years. Absolutely. So like, uh, so that that almost feels like, but I don't know. Yeah. And and you know that's. Well, I, I guess I, I guess thing. you know code is my shorthand for just being no, comfortable with the technology. I know. You know. Yeah. And yeah. you're probably saying that because you're talking to me, but it's uh, it's interesting because mm -hmm. you know Max is over there in the corner and like, I don't know. Should I tell him to go to college, and study mm -hmm. what? Yeah. And uh, um, should I say don't go to college? And then what? And I, you know, that, so it's it's very. Um, I I don't feel like I struggled with these questions for myself. Mm -hmm. Whatever twenty twenty or thirty years ago, right? Um, but I do struggle with it for them. Uh, like I really don't know. Like it was pretty clear cut. I don't know how it was when you went to school, but like oh, for, for me, I was I, going I'm to, I was going to go to college. Yeah, and, and like I, I'm the son of a college professor, so it, right. it was just it wasn't even. But it wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah. But it was still sort of a foregone conclusion. Yeah. Right. Like uh, you know, you're gonna you know study certain things. You're gonna take college prep classes in high school, and then you're mm -hmm. gonna of course go to college, partly because you took college prep classes in high school. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it like honestly, like I feel like it wasn't even a question. At any point, it was maybe a question of where, but uh, I didn't have a lot of money, and so I would have loved to have, you know, gone out of state or something. But I mean, I, I do think that you know, if you're if you're looking at college, I mean, I think it's more important to learn how to think and how to ask questions and how to access information and how to, you know, I think the the whys and the how are more important than the hows when it comes to that kind of education because, I mean, you know, I I didn't study anything technical in college, um, but if I had, all of that would be so completely outmoded at this point right. that it'd be beyond useless, you know. Well, I ta I taught a class. Uh, well, I taught a few classes at at NABTC, and the stuff I was teaching is totally useless now. Yeah, this was less than five years ago. Sure. Yeah, it's, 100% useless now. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the speed at which, you know, new technology is iterated is, is, is so fast that, yeah. that um, it's more important to learn how to learn than to, right. to, to learn the thing. I mean, and if that's your shorthand for code, I agree 100%. Yeah, that, 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 that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, before I I did um, Kavarna with with Linda, um, I, I was a, a freelance web developer, and um, nothing that I did back then is no. relevant today. No, like, it's all like different. Nothing, <laughs> and and I've I've seen friends of mine who are still in that world and what mm -hmm. it takes to you know stay abreast of all of that, and you know I just wasn't. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just not you know technically minded enough to really even keep pace with that. That's you know, tough. yeah. Well, like I told the people in my class, I'm like, um, and uh, not to be super critical, but probably ninety percent of them really had no reason, no, no, they shouldn't have taken the class. It was, yeah, you know, even that was over their head. And that's not a knock on them. It was. It's just not what they should have been doing. So I felt bad about. Like they sh you should go do something else, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I I leveled with them a lot. Um, you know, you have to eat and breathe, eat, live, eat and breathe this stuff, right? And mm -hmm. um, 
and you're up against not not like people like me necessarily, but you know people better than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, are you prepared for that? You know, like, how are you preparing yourself? And and it's global too. I mean, yeah. I, have, I have a friend it's who absolutely global. I have a friend who just set up a, um, a web design company, and um, she her entire staff is in India. Yeah, interesting. You know, and and, and then half of them have PhDs. Interesting. You know, um, so that's what. Our, our kids are up against. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's a level playing field in terms of, you know, ed- education and intelligence, obviously, you know, um, but it's not a level playing field when it comes to um, the, the relativistic aspect of our economies. You know, I mean, you know, $10 here is $10 here, $10 in India can, you know, oh, absolutely. go a lot farther. Did you ever so. read the book, the four hour work, work week? No, no, no. Uh, you should. You'd like it. I mean, yeah. uh, it kind of goes off the rails towards the end, mm-hmm. like uh, actually implementing some of this stuff. But uh, there's a line in there where uh, Tim Ferriss is the author, and he said, um, uh, get paid in dollars, uh, pay in rupees. And I think that's that's Indian currency, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and spend money in pesos, meaning like live in Mexico. And, yeah. You know? Uh, and... We do live in a global world where people can actually do that. And he outlined some of the sure. crazy things he did to, to accomplish that. Some of it's a little bit shady because he's like, he like had he had a job working for someone and like, like there's expectations and like rules there. And he's like, yeah. totally bend the rules and go do your own thing. <laughs> when, when, I, when I first, this is just funny to me to think about when I first moved back to Green Bay yeah. um, in August, 2003, um, I, <laughs> I was running um, the website um, for the biggest hip hop radio station in New York City. Wow. Of an apartment on West Walnut Street. Right. You know, I mean, so, I mean, what you're talking about, you know, it happens even within this country with its borders, you know. It happens within this street. Yeah. So I was being yeah. paid like New York wages to live, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And some of our best clients are from, you know, New York and Washington and Texas. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. I mean, some of it's like, not, you know, you're better because you're not local. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 <laughs> that happens here happens. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be good. You're from Green Bay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's take just a brief break and uh, talk about Release Wire. And then I'm going to loop back. Sure. And because uh, um, I'll forget. This is why I'm telling you. Okay. Want to talk about any... Uh, uh, any community involvement things that you're excited about? Anything that you uh, you know might have forgot to mention before about your uh, upcoming election? And uh, then we'll wrap it up with the tune. Oh, okay. So you yeah. can pick which of those extra uh, songs you want to do. Um, or maybe Nick already did. So um, I want to talk about Release Wire. And uh, Release Wire has a new project that they have. And... Uh, not not now and not the next episode, but uh, after that, uh, we're gonna talk about their new stuff. But it's uh, under wraps a little bit, and uh, and I, I'm just gonna jump in. I heard some about it, and it's pretty cool. Uh, potentially, potentially, yeah. I had to sign all sorts of non disclosures and stuff. I didn't sign anything, <laughs> but during, and I'm like, I might say stuff. You know, I have loose lips <laughs> during that little break during your political thing. Yeah. I talked to him about oh, it. Cool. And, they're doing some cool stuff over there. Yeah, awesome. And uh, so, uh, they're the the current like uh, main business of Release Wire, uh, and you know for the foreseeable future, I'm sure that's going to be remain their their main business. Um, and that was sort of the 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 main thing of the 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 uh, non disclosures. I, you know, there's certain things that they have important clients. They have oh yeah hundreds of thousands of clients, and they send this is a press release service, and they're located right in Green Bay. And but they're totally virtual. They have clients from all over the world, and uh, uh, it's run by Daniel Jones, very much a family-run company. Um, and uh, I would just encourage everyone to go. A- anybody who's a small business person that wants to get the word out, uh, I would you you can actually set up a free profile on there, and just go to releasewire.com, read up on their stuff. They have a uh, tons of information on their press release services i know that they'll help people uh fine-tune their resume uh, the, their uh, press releases not resumes uh, and they definitely help get uh get them distributed i forget the exact numbers but it's like thousands of places online and uh mr jones is a genius at this stuff so uh go to releasewire.com sign up set up a profile and uh get the word out for your small business hmm. 
Yeah. I just use Jeff Merkus. Um, so for lo- for local things, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is for you know businesses not lo- local, right? Yeah. yeah. So theor- uh, th- most of the, most of the people that we deal with here, I, I deal with local people, right? So yeah. Camera Corner Studios, Kavarna, right? <laughs> so yeah, probably wouldn't be super super helpful for any of us. Um, yeah, that's interesting that you say that. Um, so you want to elaborate on that, or you want to move on to? Oh no, he's. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I mean, there, there, there are many ways that we're fortunate in this community, yeah. and, and um, among them is to have, um, like, a handful of really very good, you know, like, downtown-based organizations yeah. that exist. You know, Jeff Marcus is um, he's the director of Downtown Green Bay Incorporated. He's a, totally a stand-up guy. He was, been great to have so around. you've had awesome. the you and uh, you've sort of mentioned that before. You've had the opportunity to work, uh, in, to have businesses in De Pere and mm-hmm. in on you know in downtown Green Bay, sort of separated into downtown Green Bay Incorporated and on Broadway. So you've had opportunities to deal with all the organizations. Yeah, and um, I, they, they all have strengths. You yeah, know? I mean, I, I, we probably don't want to get into some of the. Um, stuff with on Broadway over the years, but I mean, um, it, it definitely also has its strengths. It's, your, it's your show. I have to say that once every time. <laughs> yeah, we get to talk about whatever you want, man. I I, I don't know. It feels but I, like yeah. I, I don't want to revisit that. You know, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so, but I am curious, and one, one thing that I, uh, um, so you did have a couple of other businesses, mm. and um, what did you learn from like that whole? thing and you know elaborate a little bit on oh on what yeah all, what that was um, all about well w- w- you know going back to uh, a couple years we had this idea um i mean i, I think well i mean w- one of the central tensions in, in our life is, is the okay so y- you know you don't necessarily want to do the same thing for your entire life right and while we've enjoyed um owning and running Kavarna, you know eventually you might like to do some other things but the problem is you know, it, you're, you're probably fortunate to create a family sustaining business in the first place. Mm-hmm. So if you want to, if you, you know, if, if you, if you can't sell your business for enough to retire on, which, mm-hmm. which is, you know, kind of a fantasy um, mm-hmm. for, for us anyway, yeah. um, then like, how do you dismount from one thing and then move into a different thing? So, um, a couple of years ago, we had this idea that, um, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea to have, um, I was calling it a, like a bouquet of like smaller businesses, mm-hmm. and um, that would be simpler to run. Um, the and and so you know we we did the Liberty Cafe um, on on the east side on Adams Street, and then we also did the Lock Tenders House in De Pere, um, and th- those were really fun projects, and we really loved doing that. Um, but ultimately, we they, they weren't simple. <laughs> really, you know, yeah. So and we we had this idea that they would be, I don't know, kind of you know, once we set them going, like they mm-hmm. could just kind of like move in like watch work or something. You know, they would just kind of like keep on going on their own. You know, right. but um, that, that just never really proved to be the case. Um, and th- they were really requiring a lot of our time and energy and attention, um, which meant that we were pulling energy away from. Kavarna, um, and also from our family, you know, which, which is, um, you know, problematic. So, like, you know, at the end of the day, what we discovered was that um, by doing that, we like our overall quality of life was just really like, like going down the tubes. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, mm-hmm. I think we were we were just really stressed out for about a year. So, um, you familiar with the the book, the E Myth? Yeah, I, I don't I don't read books about. So I sound I sound very intellectual. Yeah. Like I read all these books. I probably read three books my whole life. Yeah. Um, so, um, so the concept behind the E Myth is um, there are different types of people that are attracted to being entrepreneurs, and mm-hmm. so there's the uh, I'm going to get this a little bit wrong, but the idea is there's like the entrepreneur, there's like the uh, and I forget what they called it, like the uh, the person who like you know kind of chops wood and carries water, right? Mm. And then uh, and then like a management type, right? And so like it takes all three, and most entrepreneurs are really good at like one of those and different entrepreneurs are different. You would, yeah. You'd think they're all just pine the sky entrepreneurial minds. Right. But some of them are like, no, I just want to do my job. And like, that doesn't work. You have to have like all the pieces. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, 
and I know I got the terminology all wrong, but like, what do you, do you you think that that was something that could have ever worked? Or do you think that that was something that was just never meant to be? Like, how do you look at that? Or what'd you, what'd you want? I I think, um, if Lynn and I have a weak point is, it's definitely management. Okay. You know, uh, we're, we're very much, we're introverted liberal arts style entrepreneurs, you know, um, you know, I, I always I like to tell people that like like Kavarna kind of runs a little bit like uh, like a bee flies. You know, like there, there, there's that anecdote about how a scientist studied a bumblebee and realized that on paper it was physically impossible for it to actually fly. You know, yeah. and that, that's kind of how Kavarna operates. Like like we don't know exactly why it works. You know, but it you know it, so far it has. Um, and you know, like I don't know, <laughs> like, 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 like Linda definitely has the numbers better than I do, but. Um, well, you do have a formula. I mean, there's something there that works. I, I so one key to in the E Myth and and sort of on the other book that I mentioned too. Like I don't know why I'm quoting books all of a sudden, but um, there's this idea in business that you sort of make a system and then you yeah. replicate it, right? And it sounds like that was sort of like you know maybe not you're not articulating it the same way. That that was sort of the thought process there. That, yeah, we, we definitely have our have systems in, yeah. in, in place. Um, you know, I was pretty proud of the the, the uh, soup system that we had at, at, at Liberty, yeah. um, you know, because we were able to, you know, really just have like like a fixed set of ingredients from which we were able to make about seventeen or eighteen different soups on the fly. Wow! Yeah, that's cool. It, it was pretty cool. I, I've never yeah. seen anyone else quite do that. I mean, it was it was kind of we we we, we thought of it as a sandwich shop, except that um, the different stocks and bras that we had that I was like the bread. Okay. You know, um, so we, we, you know, we had all those things on hand so we could quickly combine, you know, um, you know, chicken stock with like a tomato base and add these ingredients yeah. and, you know, you, you can just quickly assemble something. Um, so, so we, you know, we, we enjoy coming up with that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, like, like, you know, running, running up like all these businesses, it really, it was taking a lot of our time. And, um, Interesting. And I, I think you know we, we continue to think about um, what we can do next, um, um, and you know, but most of our plans at this point don't involve um, you know restaurants and retail and the you know, like there, there's just so many moving parts, you know. Right. So you'd yeah. like to get out of like not get out of, but like if you do something additionally, you'd like it to be something completely different. Yeah. You know. I mean, you, you never know what's going to happen, so you kind of want to have. You, a couple moves, you know. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I, obviously, Captain obviously I can completely relate, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you, anything else that you think is worth mentioning about the, uh, the, the county board thing? Well, um, you know, I, I think it's important that people vote. You know, okay. I would say it's, I would like to think that it would be good for them to vote for me. And um, so if somebody is interested in like learning more about okay. how you feel, yeah. is there a way they can I contact am, you? I am, um, Still, at the beginning stages of all of this. I mean, okay. I basically, I basically decided to. I'm putting you on the spot. I, I basically decided to run. Then I was hit by the holiday season, and here we are in January. Um, I, I'm I'm working on getting some stuff together that I can put out there, that I share with people. Okay. Um, I'll probably have more of that together by the end of January. But you you do have uh, Facebook. Uh, for thing, for, right? for the time being, I have um, a Facebook page. Okay. Um, do you have it there? Because I, I can't remember yeah. the URL. It's, it's just, yeah. um, you know, facebook.com galt for Brown County. That's yep. G-A-L-T for Brown County. Um, and um, I, I'd re- be really happy to have conversations with people in that space. Um, What's that photo? Uh, well, that photo is just a, was that, like a 19th century map of Green Bay? Is that what it is, yeah. 19th century? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, I guess that's what it looks like, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I any. Well, I, I think I mean to get back to that. I, I just um, I'm getting weird messages. Yeah. Or, I'm getting bombarded with messages. Sorry. Yeah. Rude people um, interrupting our time. I mean, I, I think there's something like eight thousand people in in my in the district. district. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where I'm pulling that number from, but um, that and probably sounds about right. Something like eight hundred of them vote. Okay. You know, and I, I I would love to see the participation level in local politics. Boy, that could easily double, right? Well, it, it'll it'll be more this year because of the primaries, on the presidential primaries. But uh, uh, right, right. So, do you know when voting day is? April fifth. Okay, so April fifth, yeah. which is a Tuesday. 
right? So, yeah. It's, it's the, well, I know uh, that's always the joke, for, right? The, the, the first want, Tuesday in April, right? When you want, when you want, when, uh, what, what they would say Wednesday when it, when you don't want people oh, to vote, right? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Democrats will tell Republicans, oh, don't forget to vote on Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that's ever heard that. I have no idea. Yeah, I think that's just you being mean. Really? Yeah. I've never actually yeah. said that to anyone. Well, you just said it to a thousand people. Well, we actually, uh, I, you know what? I actually think there'll be a lot more because Alex is a pretty popular dude. Um, uh, so yeah. uh, that's all I got. So uh, yeah. which track are we playing um, wow. to close okay. out? Do you, you have anything else to throw in there? No, okay. So this is... Um... Oh, you know what? We do have one, just one quick little thing. Like how, how, how would somebody find out more about Kavarna? Oh, um, Kavarna.com. That's K-A-V-A-R-N-A.com. Uh, we are um, quite easy to locate in the middle of the Broadway district. We are the only yellow building on the street, as far as I know. And I must say, uh, if anybody's going there for the first time, I almost always park in the back. It's great yeah. to have that back entrance with oh, a huge yeah. parking lot behind. Yeah. You don't have to fight for a spot on the road. No. There's plenty of parking behind yeah. you. Although I, I think um, we've, we've been making people keep the parallel parking skills sharp for, <laughs> yeah. for, for many years now, and I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. You know? <laughs> well, I'm, I still am terrible. Now that they have backup cameras in the company cars, I'll, I'll swing by in parallel park <laughs> more often. Never. I'll never <laughs> parallel park. No? I don't ever need yeah. to learn to. We'll have self-driving cars in five years. <laughs> <laughs> or Max will drive for you. Yeah, there you we'll go. have self-driving cars in five years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which, which, uh, which track are we going to play? Um, what is, yeah, this, is, this will be good. Uh, this is... Um, technical issue. Please stand by. <laughs> no editing, Nick. No editing. <laughs> This was a song that um, my friend Kevin Seal and I started writing at some point in college, and then he finished it probably about 10 years ago. And it actually, I think it was um, a part of a, um, a musical about a, you know, multi, like an interdimensional zombie that travels through space and time. I, I never saw the full story about that, but um, I will edit it in after. Oh, for real? Okay, well then, good. Because okay. uh, you know what? Because I almost missed like the important question. So yeah. when you come back, when you're feeling better, yeah, uh, who would you like to co-host an interview with me? Like who? Who else would you like to rope into? Uh, you know, oh, sitting in that chair. Gosh. Actually, probably a different chair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, likely. We're in the control room today. Normally, we're in the studio, but oh, I think it'd be great to get Brian Simons in here, the library director. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I have a lot of questions for him as well. Good. Well, I'll hold you to that. That'd be awesome. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you're going to edit in the track. So uh, Yeah, I'll make it yeah, work. So, even, so we're going to not be able to say no editing then. <laughs> True. But we'll still say it in the beginning. <laughs> okay. Okay.
something